We're here with Bill Reed of Precision Manufacturing. And Bill, you make grapples. You make all kinds of heavy steel stuff on the front end of tractors and skid steers. Yes, we sure do. But I'm interested in this tiny guy up here. What you got up here? Okay, well, this was uh, a boy we had in our line. It's a, uh, it's a smaller, lighter, uh, lighter weight grapple. We've got five different series of uh, grapples now, and uh, this one filled the, uh, the void of the, for the smaller, smaller truck. What is unique about this grapple? All right, so what we wanted to do, we wanted to bring the features that we have in a lot of our larger grapples yeah. into this. So, and most importantly, this has double grapples on it. Probably 90% of our sales are in uh, double grapples versus single grapples. Grapple. Yeah. I love the double grapples. That was critical yeah. to me. Yes. And that's kind of why we got together. Yes, it Mr. is. Mr. Double Grapple. It is. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the features, uh, double grapple, of course, it'll clamp down on an uneven load. And that way, half of your load's not going to be bouncing out of your bucket. And uh, we made this 57 inches wide so that we could have clearance back in the back and still have good hose management uh, in the rear of this. We put a plate to protect the hoses uh, in the front so um, your fittings aren't getting knocked off. Yeah, I mean, that, there's one good point. If you've seen our prototype grapple, some of the hoses are kind of getting away. Well, that's because I asked for too long of hoses. Yes. You've actually got them all hidden here. Yes. Everything's hidden, everything's clean, but I asked for way too much hose and it was just getting away from me. Yeah, and it's and, and that's that's somewhat difficult as a manufacturer because some people will have their auxiliary outlets at the front of the tractor, some will have it at the back, some will have it midway on the tractor. So trying to satisfy all three links is sometimes a challenge. So now this grapple you can push it all the way down against that pipe. Yes. And what does that allow me? What that allows you to do is uh, you're allowed to push brush with it and you're not putting strain on your uh, okay, cylinders. So I'm not going to break that ram if I just put that, hard on That's it. correct. Another important feature that you'll find on all of our uh, grapple rakes is we reinforce every time down on the rake. On the end times, they're the ones that get the, get the most, uh, most push, twist, yeah. push and twist on it. We reinforce it on both sides. And uh, that, that really uh, strengthens about, doubles the strength on the, um, on the tines. Now right you don't times. use gussets No. To try to strengthen those? No, we Why don't. Uh, the gussets have a tendency to uh, dig in and uh, dig you down deep into uh, the dirt. What we want to do, we want to float right along the top, rake up the, uh, the brush and debris, let it windrow up into the opening of the uh, grapple, then you clamp down on it. So you like the tips here to kind of go in the ground a little bit, and then, but not enough to really plow anything. It just makes a little slip. Right, just skimming right along the top of the grass makes or the sense. dirt. Now, we've got a prototype of this grapple. My question for you is, has there been any changes? Looks, It looks a little bit different to me than our grapple. It is. Um, the original prototype, we were a little bit smaller, and we had our hoses coming straight out the back. Okay. Now we increase the length by a few inches so that we can have the uh, ports coming out the side so they're not sticking out the back where they're more likely to get knocked okay. off. So the total width now is? 57 inches. 57. Yes. Okay. The, the extra, little extra weight for the skid steer. Um, right. Right, so it, it'll vary by less than five pounds, but with the skid steer brackets, it's 261 pounds. I don't think for our viewers we really need to go through the bigger grapples, but the first thing I see, I'm, I'm just, it just sticks out to me that you've built a grapple or two. Yeah, we've been building grapples for uh, over 12 years, and you'll notice all of them have simil similar characteristics. Yeah. They've got the same curvature on the uh, rake times as well as the grapple times. So so we've been making them, like I said, for uh, 12 years. Yeah. I mean, they just get bigger and bigger and tougher and tougher as we go back. Uh, we even go up to one grapple that weighs 1,400 The audio got so poor here that we just couldn't even use it. Remember, we're amateurs here. Sorry about that. I asked Bill how he would recommend the correct grapple for the correct size tractor. After all, he has five lines of grapples all the way from the Mini 322 at 257 pounds up to that 1,400 pound monster he just mentioned. He suggested that we 
try to size the grapple at or below 50% of the total lift capacity of the loader. While that might be a great standard for the larger machines, I just don't think that's fair for the subcompact and small compact tractors. We just don't have enough lift capacity to dedicate that much weight to the grapple itself. And that's why they use lightweight, extra high strength AR400 steel for the Mini 322. Bill, I'm ashamed to say that you sent me one of these last winter to show and I haven't got around to it yet. That's okay, it's not gonna go stale on you. It's still good. <laughs> What do you actually call this thing? It's kind of a hybrid approach. It is. We call it the uh, Mini Pallet Fork Add a Grapple. Mini Pallet Fork Add a Grapple. Okay. So the pallet forks don't come with this. No, no. We sell this for existing pallet forks. Okay. So I can bring my pallet forks and turn them into a grapple with this. This thing attaches to the actual fork frame. Yes. So this mounts right on the uh, rail of the pallet forks okay. and uh, this is uh, what they call a class 2A. I believe it's 16 inches from the bottom to the top okay. and, and they're all, gonna be and they're all, all standard. standard they're all standard until you get into the industrial uh, style of uh, forks. Okay. And then I see a couple of bolts down there at the bottom with a kind of a little lip or a little what do you call that bracket yeah. there? To... Alright so on the top we, um, we hook into the rail yeah. with a hook and on the bottom we also hook to keep it from swinging up. Okay. And uh, we use a bolting bolting system to um, to keep it secure. Okay. And then for left and right movement, I saw this nifty device here. Yeah, we uh, we came up with that idea to keep it from sliding and um, sliding left and right. And even though it's standard, the uh, the length from the top to the bottom is standard. The slots are not standard because you can have thin slots wide slots uh it's they can they can be spaced out four inches so one you've got inch three or, different holes here to hopefully catch one so of the slots on that's the right the so bill we're lifting this up here that there's no hoses connected have you measured what this uh, opening is yeah it's 45 inches from okay. the forks up to the tip well, that's that's quite a big opening now i suppose with this approach you could actually mount it offset on your uh, frame if you wanted to and it looks like you could also mount your forks inside the actual atagraphle if you wanted to put your forks in there closer. That's correct. And if you're using it for brush, big brush pile, you'll probably want them farther out. If you're um, picking up smaller stuff, well, you can put them in, in between. Bill, this thing looks fairly lightweight. What, what is the atagraphle weigh here? It weighs 112 pounds. Okay. So That's you're with cylinder. With the cylinder, so you're not adding a lot of additional weight to your forks to uh, take away from your capacity of what you're going to be lifting. Okay. So you would think a compromise solution like this. This is kind of a grapple, but not really a grapple, sort of. Sort right. Of, but you don't lose a lot. Uh, for instance, I believe my forks uh, and frame are 180 pounds total. Yet we're right at 300 pounds with that with that mm -hmm. solution. Right. So that's not too bad. But we talk about compromise, a lot of times there's an advantage. What is the price for this thing? Okay, this is going to retail for $595. Okay, 595 So you will need the third function hydraulic valve. But other than that, as long as you've got forks. If you've got forks, uh, this will mount right to it. No, no custom modifications whatsoever. I like it. Now, where can we get your products? Okay, you can buy this online at agfolks.com. That's A-G-F-O-L-K-S, agfolks.com. Okay, and then you put in all your information there, and you can use coupon code TTWT for either this or the Mini 322 Grapple, right? That's correct, yes. Bob here, J.D. Mish. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.